So this is the second and final part of the protein synthesis video series. This video is about a process called translation. In part one, and if you haven't checked it out yet, go and have a look, we looked at transcription, which is the process where the DNA in the nucleus is transcribed at the location of the gene into some messenger RNA or mRNA. So let's have a look at how that mRNA then moves out into the cytoplasm and is translated into a protein. Woof, woof. Oh, oh, uh, sorry about that. Okay, uh, so you're probably wondering what on earth I'm doing with these plasticine balls. Well, they have a role to play. Hopefully, they're going to help me to explain translation to you. Let me explain. So in part one, when we were talking about transcription, we were looking at how we read the code on the DNA, the gene, and make our messenger RNA or mRNA. In part two, as I've said, we're going to be looking at how do we translate the message on that RNA, which is in the form of U, A, C and G, those four nucleotide bases. How do we get from the sequence of bases to a sequence of amino acids, which is what form a protein. And yep, you guessed it, that's what my little plasticine balls are here. They represent our amino acids. We know there are 20 different types. I didn't have 20 different colors, unfortunately. So I'm just representing a few of our amino acids here. And we're gonna have a look at how a cell reads the code on that RNA and then translates it into a sequence of amino acids to form a protein. As you can see, the amino acids are all different and it's the sequence of those amino acids that is critical to the final structure of a protein and therefore the way that it functions. So the process of translation takes place out in the cytoplasm at the ribosome. And you may or may not know, but ribosomes are commonly located on the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So here we have a ribosome. They're quite simple, made of two subunits, a bigger subunit and a smaller subunit. At the ribosome, our messenger RNA will arrive. So here's some messenger RNA, like the messenger RNA that was transcribed in video one. It's not exactly the same strand of messenger RNA. It's got a slightly different base sequence, but it does begin with AUG. That's important because AUG is the start codon, and that is how the cell knows where a gene starts. There's also a stop codon, and we'll talk about that a bit later. So our messenger RNA is going to arrive at the ribosome and it sits in between the two subunits, something a little like that. Now, there's another couple of components that we need to bring in. Some of those are our amino acids. So here we have a selection of amino acids represented by some different colors and different shapes. Remember, there are 20, so we haven't got all of the different types of amino acids there, but we've got a selection. And Somehow, as we've said, those amino acids need to be placed into position in the correct sequence to form the correct protein. And we know that every three bases on the mRNA is called a codon and codes for one amino acid. For example, AUG, which as I just explained before, and I'll just bring in our genetic code here, AUG is the start codon. It also codes for the amino acid methionine. So here's methionine up here. How is this amino acid going to find its way down to the corresponding codon and begin a polypeptide chain 
and start the process of this protein forming. Well, what's involved is a molecule that helps to transfer the amino acid to the chain. This is what we call transfer RNA. It is an RNA strand. And we call it transfer RNA because obviously its job is to transfer an amino acid. Now the way transfer RNA molecules or tRNA molecules recognize and know which amino acid to place in the chain at which particular location is due to this base triplet here which is complementary to the codon and therefore we call it an anticodon. And if the anticodon matches up with the codon, then it will place the amino acid in the chain. So the tRNA will collect the appropriate amino acid and then it will transfer the amino acid to the ribosome ready to start this polypeptide chain forming. Now, one of the things you would have picked up on, tRNA still has the base U and not the base T. And of course, that's because it is RNA and not DNA. Now, next we have a codon of AGC. Let's bring in our genetic code again. AGC is over here and it codes for serine, the amino acid serine. So AGC what will our anticodon be on the tRNA molecule? It should be UCG. And here is that transfer RNA molecule. It's going to collect a serine amino acid and transfer the serine amino acid to the ribosome so that it can bind with the first amino acid and start our polypeptide chain. The next thing that happens, as you can see, everything's moved along one. And the, t the transfer RNA that dropped off methionine, that can then detach, move away from the ribosome, and it can go and transfer another methionine into the growing polypeptide chain. And the other thing that you can see that's happened, the bond has formed between the first and second amino acid. So next, we have CCG, CCG, is the codon for the amino acid proline. The transfer RNA with the anticodon that is complementary to that codon is GGC. That's going to collect a proline amino acid and transfer it down to the ribosome. And then again, everything shifts along one. And so here you have it, everything's moved along one. A bond has formed between the serine and proline amino acids. And then the next transfer RNA is going to come in. This time, UAC means it's going to collect a tyrosine amino acid, transfer tyrosine down to the ribosome, and the process continues. So our polypeptide chain is really growing here. Next transfer RNA comes in. AUU is the corresponding codon for isoleucine. So isoleucine will be collected by the transfer RNA, delivered to the ribosome, process continues. AGC, we've had that one before over here, that coded for serine. So of course, another serine amino acid will be collected by the transfer RNA and delivered to the ribosome. And the last one I've got here is AGU. AGU actually codes for serine as well because remember in some cases there is more than one codon for a particular amino acid. So a transfer RNA with the anticodon for AGU of UCA will collect the serine amino acid and bring it to the ribosome. So what we've been seeing here is the polypeptide chain of amino acids gradually growing by one amino acid at a time. Of course, this process happens a lot faster inside of cells. And this, of course, is not finished yet. Genes, in reality, are much, much longer. I've only just shown you a small segment so that you can get an idea of what's happening. This will keep on continuing until a stop codon is reached. When a stop codon is reached, the 
polypeptide molecule will detach from the ribosome and it will fold up into its three-dimensional structure, which is hard to show or demonstrate with these paper cutouts. But I've got a diagram here which might give you a bit of a better idea. This is a three-dimensional protein structure, also referred to as its tertiary structure. And as we know really well, it's the overall structure of a protein that is absolutely critical to its function. If the protein doesn't have this exact structure, it won't be able to function correctly. So there you have it. That's protein synthesis. We've now been through transcription and translation. We've seen how we can get from DNA to an eventual protein. I've got a final diagram here to help bring, all, bring it all into perspective. We've got the DNA, which is of course inside of the nucleus. This is our nuclear membrane. In transcription, which happens in the nucleus, the DNA separates at the location of the gene. Messenger RNA is formed in a complementary manner to the gene. That messenger RNA then moves out through the nuclear pore to the ribosome in the cytoplasm. It's then translated by a process where transfer RNA molecules collect the specific amino acid and place it in the growing polypeptide chain according to the base sequence on the messenger RNA. Remember, the most important point is that the messenger RNA was synthesized using the DNA or the gene as a template. So what you can see in this overall diagram is that it's the sequence of nucleotides in the DNA that determines the overall sequence of amino acids and therefore structure of the proteins produced in cells. Guys, that's been protein synthesis. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Any questions before free time? Yeah, didn't you say there was gonna be a pop quiz today? What was that, Thomas? I didn't say nothing, I didn't say anything.